Okay, so now we've looked at how the system works, let's have a look at creating an example game. So this game is going to be very simple. The only thing that it will do is replicate or send the position of the player to the server, and the server will in turn send that to all of the connected clients. So first things first, we should make use of the uh, example file that I have. So that's called the template file. I'm actually going to recreate mine from scratch because my template file at the moment of writing this tutorial is slightly damaged. When I give you the final version it will work appropriately. So let's create a Suzanne object. So we're going to go to this cursor center, I'm going to add a mesh called Suzanne and I'm going to enable networking on this object. And if we look at the template classes, we should have a template here, but we don't, so let's just reconfigure this. And now that we have our object, let's think about what's going to happen. Once the server has the position of this object, it will send that position um, internally to all of the clients, and so it doesn't need to have any properties to do that. But the system is designed to set the position from the server, so if we want a client to do it, we need to send a message from the client to the server to set the new position. Now, we've already talked about applicate, app, uh, attribute replication, and that's only from server to client. We've also talked about RPC call replication, which can be sent from either server to, or, to client or client to server, as long as the client in question owns that object. So, what we're going to do is create some properties, posx, posy, and posz, and those properties will be set to the position values on the client and sent to the server. So, let's create these properties. We're going to create a new RPC call and check these arguments. And we're then going to call this set or send pos to server. And then, once we've called this, we need to make sure the target is set to server and neither reliable nor simulated are enabled. So, that's good. Now we need to actually set these variables. So, uh, let's click network, let network state and click client, and then click, we're going to create an always sensor. We're going to set it to true pulse, and we're going to trigger a Python controller. And we're going to run a module as part of this. So we're going to call the module position, and we're going to create a function called dump. And then we're going to create a new module, position.py. So inside of this function, let's unpack our position. So pos underscore x, pos underscore y, and pos underscore z equals own dot world position. And now let's assign these to properties. So own pos underscore x equals pos underscore x. And let's copy this three times. And now we have set our position to some attributes, to some variables or even, third time lucky, to some game object properties. Now, very quickly, um, when this gets to the server, we need to actually apply these. So let's also make another function called load. And we're basically going to do the reverse of what we did in dump. So let's first uh, get our pos x, pos y, and pos z variables, put, put them on the other side of world position, so that world position is now set to these variables. And then let's actually load these from the game object properties by uh, reverse and equal signs here as well. So let's just do that. Uh, for now, we're not going to worry about the fact that half these don't actually do anything correctly because we're just going to reformat. So that's indent these as necessary, and then we're going to be done. So in our client state, we're going to dump the position of the object to three game object properties, and those are going to be sent via an RPC call to the server. So on the server state, let's switch to the server network state, we're going to add a message sensor which will receive the RPC call, and we're going to then trigger position.load. So let's have this RPC call message subject in the correct format, which is firstly RPC call, for an RPC call is RPC underscore. And then we're going to put the name of the RPC call, which in this case is send pos to server. When we get this message, we're now going to load the position. So we actually need to now trigger the RPC call, and we do that on the client. So go back to the client state, and create a message actuator. Connect it to the same sensor that triggers the, the dumping function, because the actuator will be triggered after, or the message will be picked up by the network system after the Python controller is run, so we know that it's going to, have, it's going to dump the position first. And the subject is going to be RPC underscore send pos to server. Exactly the same as what we did in the other message uh, sensor. 
Now, a quick bit of uh, information into the system. You might think that if we have lots of objects running this code, they'll all receive the same messages and, and mess each other up. That doesn't happen because the network system will look at any registered network objects and modify their message sensors and controllers so that they have custom subjects. And the way we do that is we basically add a special ID to the subject field. And that means that we can guarantee that only one uh, object will run that control that message sensor whenever that message is actually received. Uh, and for that particular object, of course. So that's that, uh, and that all works. Now, how do we test this? Well, um, whenever you save a blend file with the network system in involved in it, it will create the appropriate configuration folders for all of these network objects. So in my case, it's created for Suzanne a definition and a definition file. So an actor file and a definition file. Uh, in the current version of the add-on I've got, it's actually got a bit of a mismatch, and it should be definition.cfg. You won't have this problem, so I'm just going to change that there. So if we then go to our first layer, I'm going to set the network mode to server and the socket port to 1200. Make this full screen and save it. And in this file, I've set it to a client. So if we maximize this up, and quickly go on to the server, by default the server won't actually do anything. The reason for this is quite simple. It doesn't have any means of handling a new connection. We need to give it that ability. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some uh, some controllers. And I've already done this for a previous demo, um, but I'm going to pretend I haven't. So we need to have this connection.py, and all these functions will actually be here, so you don't need to do this yourself. Um, but what we do need to have is, uh, in the rules section, we need to make sure that it creates a replicable from type name called Suzanne, which is in the in the post initialize function, um, and that will create a, name, a game object in the server called Suzanne, which we we've already got in our scene. Uh, in future, I'll have it so that you can do this in logic books, and you won't have to do this in code. It's only because at the moment I can't think of a great way to do it that's configurable and not hacky. So that's that. So now, if we uh, check, I've got my console open, which I do. Uh, I'm gonna Make that lo lock that using special application above my blender. I'm going to save my server and run. And it seems to start okay. And it's most likely that it won't run quite properly later on. Um, I'm going to start my client and it actually worked. So it created my Suzanne object and it created it on the server first and then replicated it to the client. So now we've got this, if I actually close the client, uh, and I can't remember which button I used to close. Is it escape? Uh, and now that we've disconnected, we need to give Suzanne the ability to move around because then we can actually see what she's doing, so or he's doing. So let's switch to the last layer and go to the client state in our net mode state. And we're basically going to create an always sensor. So in fact, that's connected to the same always sensor we have. We're going to run a Python controller. And I've already copied this in, I think. No, I haven't. So I'm going to copy in a, fun a function called a file, even or a, a script called movement and the function is called dot keyboard. So if we create a new file, movement.py, it's got this keyboard function, which is basically basic keyboard movement. So if we go to the first layer, save our blend file, run our server and run our client, we can now move around. And because we're not synchronizing the rotation, you'll notice that it doesn't sync the rotation on the server, which is the left, just to remind you. So that's that. What happens if we run another client? So first things first, I'm going to disconnect uh, and I'm going to stop the server because I haven't re-implemented this connection for a while so I need to do that. Um, and if we go to another instance of Blender, which I have already open, I'm going to check with it's set to client, which it is. I'm going to show the console and I'm going to start the server start this other client that you can't see and then I'm going to start this main client so now I can move either and it will respond appropriately and I can move this one and that particular glitch you're seeing is, is entirely separate, it's due to something else um, but the point is that it, it actually functions so that's always a bonus so now that these things are moving around we can actually do some more configuration I think it might be to do the rotation actually, hold on fix that. So to fix that, let's actually set up the rotation as well. So we're going to go onto our server, just because I already have that open. In fact, no, let's go on our client, because I have that open already. And all we're doing is basically creating the same system we did for the position, 
but for all similar rotations. So we've created three variables, ORI X, ORI Y, and ORI Z. We've created a new RPC call, and we've given it those arguments. And now we're going to also create another message controller, actuator even, and another Python controller. And I'm going to move that up next to the position sender and setter as well. And I'm going to type in orientation.dump. I will include these files in the template, and I've already created these, this module. And I'm also then going to trigger uh, with my AND, my other message sensor, set, uh, actuator, which is going to invoke RPC send ORI to server. Now I'm going to go to my server state, and I'm going to create another Python controller. I'm going to create a message sensor, RPC underscore send ORI to server, and it's going to be running this module function, which is orientation.load. Uh, so now if we go back to the client state, so we can see what's going on, I'm going to save that in full screen. And then I'm going to reopen this on my server, and I'm going to change my net mode to server, and the socket brought back to 1200. So let's check this all works, we'll start the server. We're then going to start the client, and nothing is setting in terms of the orientation. So why could that be? Let's have a look. So we're actually checking, now we're just going to check that we're invoking all the correct things. So for whatever reason, our server decided not to copy the correct file. So with the changes made, we start the server, we start the client, and the rotation is received as necessary. Now let's check if this actually works in the uh, case of having another client. It was working earlier, so let's check if it works now. We create our other client, we're moving. And there we go. So it was to do with the extrapolation of the rotation, I think. Um, I will look into it. But at least now what we have is a working demo. So where's my other client? Uh, the client can move around, it can walk, and so on. And it does what it needs to do. So you'll notice in my right-hand client that if I press right and left, it sort of looks like it's fighting the turn in the other object. And that's because they're both running the turn logic. So to fix this, we need to look into that simulation system I was talking about earlier. So we're going to go to our file, and we're going to show the states, and basically change the state of this object to a remote autonomous proxy. You'll now notice if I try and control this client, the other object doesn't attempt to fight it because it's not running that state. And you can actually look at it in the debug properties and you'll see that the state dirty isn't running. State one, sorry, which is the client state isn't running. Uh, and if I do the same on the other client, you'll notice that it too can move around as it wishes. So um, that is how you make use of the autonomous proxy system to ensure that you isolate logic only to that which is necessary for. And that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. So I'll release all the source files, and in another tutorial we'll look at more advanced systems and, and changes to the system as it develops. So thank you for watching.